Okay, today's plan is to go and uh, do a type of fun fishing. Um, I'm actually going to see what the conditions are to run out to the reef. It's looking looking okay from here, but it, it tends to get rougher as you get closer to the reef, that uh, four to five mile range. But um, what I'm gonna work at today is I'm gonna probably try a drifting live bait. Um, I had options of either mullet, pilchards, or uh, like a blue runners, hardtails, blue runners. Um, I saw these uh, birds, pelicans and stuff all over. They weren't diving, they are just hanging out here. So wherever you find them, you'll be around the pilchards. They might not be feeding, but they'll be around. So. Uh, I did find them, they're right here. So I'm gonna cast some pilchards, take those out there. And I wanna run bigger bait, so I'll probably maybe try to get hardtails out there. I brought my uh, sabiki stick, big old sabiki stick. So uh, I could hit some spots there. So we're gonna catch some bait here for real quick. See if anything's around. I don't need a lot. Maybe a dozen, because I'm not going to be chumming with them. Yeah, these are good ones. Ah, stupid. Go right in there. Using the old good old five foot net. That's a good one. That'll probably top me off. Yep, yeah, that'll do so it. What I'm going to do is cull out a bunch of these because I don't want to overload my well. And we're not, uh, I'm not going to be chumming with these, although it would be good, but. I don't want to babysit these dudes too much. So I'm just going to keep the larger ones. Get rid of all these small ones. The oxygen will, levels will stay higher and then it'll be easier to keep them alive. And another tip for uh, the longevity of taking care of your, taking care of your baits is right after you catch them, just overload the uh, your bucket with fresh water. Just keep filtering it. Uh, especially like pinfish, they'll poo a lot, but these guys are going to burn a lot of energy right at the beginning, so they'll suck up a lot of oxygen. So you want to uh, give them some, uh, cycle out a lot of fresh water right in the beginning, and then after that you can kind of take your time with them. So I'm going to cool a little bit more of these, probably another quarter of these, and then I'll be good. Uh, I also kind of wanted to show you my uh, sabiki stick. Um, unique about these I mean the sabikis are the uh, the little hairless hooks or hair feathered hooks and uh, they're good for uh, catching bait and you just have like a string of them um, I think this one normally has like seven seven of them eight of them but a few of them got eaten off uh, what makes this a useful tool is that when I'm done using it uh, the sabikis aren't flapping in the wind and it'll get you uh, stuck on it I could just reel it in and it basically sits there um, it's not the most flexible thing in regards to uh, being uh, very sensitive but that's generally not too big of a deal and I could just jig it grab a fish bring it up and then I've got a couple of yellow tails, which I don't need. But that's how it basically works. Um, I'm not going to be needing the uh, herring today. So I might do some hardtails if I need some larger baits out there. Same type of deal. I was stupid and I forgot my uh, fish finder. So I'll make it a little bit more difficult, but I think I'll be able to pick some up. But anyways, now that I'm done, instead of having those flapping in the wind, basically just reel it up. 
the weight sits at the end and then that's basically it and that's a good bait spot for uh, the thread pin herrings if you need it okay made it out to the outside of the reef all my boys are happy no uh, casualties um, I'm gonna be running this is actually a shark rig I have but until I get everything set up I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter I think this is like 80 pound uh, wire I'll go down to like some 40s but this will be the basic setup seven knot circle hook um, I'm gonna have one flat line drifting behind and then I'm gonna have one with a uh, three ounce egg sinker and then a long leader to be uh, drifting towards the bottom and then uh, see what kind of action we can pull Here you are. These are some beautiful pilchards. And I got some monsters in there that look like they were uh, mullet. Alright, so drop this guy out. Let him be free. We got a fish on on the top line. Get that drag right. This was just floating on the top. Head shaking. It's either a bonita or a tuna. Ugh, I think. Bonita. No gold. Nice one. go. One nice Bernitas. Oh, yeah. oh, first one. Now I got a fish on this side. Oh. I think I lost that one. What the hell? Sons of bitches. Yeah, I lost that bait. Uh, mind it staying down there. Oh, I hope I didn't get rocked up. Pump them up, pump them up. This one was on the uh, down rod, or the weighted. Got color. What kind of color? Oh, a nice mutton. Well, I guess this boy will be coming home to dinner. Because he's not living. Blew off some of the scales. But beauty of a fish. Well, that's For some of my new uh, subscribers and viewers, um, if you haven't seen this, I've got a video about it. But this is my live well setup. It's basically a five gallon tank or a five gallon bucket. I think it's actually a little bit larger, it's a taller one. But um, the way it works is I have drilled the whole water. This is the down water line, about a third of the way down. 
I'd probably recommend maybe going to a quarter of the way down and doing your hole. Uh, start off with like an eighth of an inch and then work your way up till you get that right balance of how much water flow you want. So I use this as my water getter. And then I fill it up. It takes three scoops to get it to the overflowing, but two is pretty much enough. And then, I don't know if I'll turn it so you can see it, but as you can see there, the water's escaping. And that's the drain part of it. And it'll just basically bleed out until it gets to that point, then stop. What that's good for is that it's constantly circulating the water versus like a, you could have an air bubbler, but you still have the problems of the toxicity that you run into because of all the uh, ammonia buildup, the waste buildup, the uh, scales coming off and so forth, since you're not circulating the water and then eventually they'll still die. Same with water temperatures, if you're in warm waters. Um, in the sun, this will heat up and then make it hotter than the water temperatures on the outside. Um, but that's basically how I keep them alive. And then, like I said, the whole diameter will depend on how long it, it takes to sink down. Um, this bucket I use for the pilchards when I'm going a long distance or for a mullet when I'm going to go like tarpon where I want four or five mullet in this bucket. I want the turnover to be kind of high. Um, but then there's some baits like pinfish where you don't need to be as much water turnover and you don't want as much work. So you can make the hole smaller so it'll be a slower drain. Um, this is because I want to protect these baits. I want to keep them very frisky alive. As you can see, no problems with them. They're not losing their scales. They're not, they don't have uh, red noses. They're just perfect baits. And these are medium larges. I've used a couple of the extra large ones already and that's what I caught those fish on. But uh, that's how I do it. Very simple, very cheap. Uh, no electronics. Everything corrodes in uh, salt water. That's why I hate any type of electronics. And this is just so efficient, it works really well. Um, I've got the lid that normally I use, but uh, pinfish and uh, pilchers, they don't jump, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, mullet, the blue runners, shrimp, then I'll put the cover on because they will jump out. But as you can see, it's still draining out, so it gives you some time. But like I said, is I want uh, a pretty high turnover. Uh, I'm not constantly have to refill it, they're fine even at that lowest position because it's starting out with fully flushed oxygenated water. So there's a quick tip for you. I think I got a bite on this one. Bonito didn't run very well. Or shark. What is this? Ah, stupid shark. Ah, oh, dumbass. Damn asshole. God. Another big shark's gonna come and whack this dude. Stay. Don't. Shit, shit. No. Don't bite. No biting. No biting. Twist the wire. Dun dun dun. It's okay. You're okay. Look at that eye closing. Relax.
didn't even get down to the bottom. If this is another shark, then I'm moving. Man. Why that same dumbass? Holy shit! Almost lost the GoPro. You guys almost went swimming to the deep. Holy shit, that would have been bad. Yep. Necessary. I just want my hook back. I just want the hook back. Don't jump in the boat. Don't jump in the boat. Totally not necessary, brother. Relax. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. Go to sleep. a dream. It's just a dream. There you go. So they're still alive and happy. But I'm gonna let these guys go and probably just do a little bit of trolling. Got all these birds diving over here so I'm gonna run the spoon. The always useful spoon low maintenance but they're bombing it there i'm gonna definitely get nailed here zero mackerel's jumping there he goes fish on Did it come off? There we go. Oh god, what the hell? Oh, it broke me off, sons of fuckers. What broke? Oh, cut my braided line. There was a swivel there, so it cut it. Fork. That's why I can't have a nice car. Look at this parking lot. Holy crap. Gonna have to kayak home. Holy crap. 